Good evening, it's six o'clock, and I would like to call to order the regular meeting of June 21st, 2023. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Alternate Commissioner Torgerson is absent. So, Commissioner Batnish. I mean, I'm sorry, committee member Benish. Uh, present. Committee member Chow. Present. Committee member Chang. Present. Vice Chair, I'm sorry. Uh, Vice Chair McKay. Present. And Chair Lacon. Present. Thank you, sorry. Okay. The agenda is posted 72 hours prior to each meeting at the following locations. City Hall, the Coral Public Library, and the Stoneman Building. The agenda is also posted on the city's website. The city welcomes public input. At this time, the public may address the design review committee on items that are not on the agenda. Pursuant to state law, the design review committee may not discuss or take action on issues not on the meeting agenda. To ensure that everyone, including those joining us remotely, are able to hear all speakers clearly, please speak directly into the microphone. Please note that all comments are limited to three minutes and will be timed by city staff. I would now like to ask staff to explain how the public comment will work for those individuals participating through Zoom and phone. For those who wish to participate through Zoom or phone, um, you can use the raise hand feature on the Zoom or you can email planning. So it's planning at cityofsamarino.org and we will read your comment into the public record. Does anyone here wish to speak on an item not on the agenda? Do um, do we have anyone, uh, any, any comments submitted electronically? Any public comments? No public comments have been submitted electronically. Moving on to public hearings, each committee member has received plans and staff comments and has reviewed every item on the agenda and visited each site. The general order of for hearing each case will be as follows. Staff will discuss the case and provide background information and a recommendation. Committee members may ask questions of staff after the presentation. The applicant will then present their project if they desire to do so. The committee may take the opportunity to ask the applicant questions. The hearing will then open up for public comment from in-person and teleconference participants. At the conclusion of public comment, the applicant will have a chance to respond to the public comments at each at which time the public comment will be closed. I will then ask for comments from the committee members for discussion, but please do not repeat comments made by your fellow committee members. Committee members may then vote to approve, deny, or continue the project. In the event of a denial, it is hoped that the applicant will have heard comments during the public comment period and during deliberation that will be useful in resubmitting an application. It is also important to understand that there is a 15-day appeal period after an action has been taken for the applicant or any interested party to request the Planning Commission review and act on the case. Staff, who will be presenting item number one? That would be me, Assistant Planner Savag Sasunian, for the record. Item number one is design review case number DR23-03. Uh, for 620 South Allen Avenue. Uh, this project was first heard by the Design Review Committee at the meeting held on the um, May 3rd, 2023. 
Initially, the applicant had proposed to replace a mix of existing wood and aluminum windows with pre-approved aluminum clad windows. The initial proposal also included the removal of a few stained glass and arched windows, which was not in accordance with the window replacement procedures. Now, the revised project shall replace the existing windows with wood windows that are custom made to match the existing design. Many of the existing wood windows will remain or be replaced in kind. The leaded and stained glass windows will be kept intact. The project is in accord. I'm sorry. The project is in accordance with the window replacement procedures, with few exceptions. Uh, one half arch wood window in the rear is proposed to be removed. A uh, permit from 1977 indicates that this window is not original to the home and other changes in the rear include the removal or relocation of some windows. Finally, staff is able to meet the applicable findings and recommends approval with the condition that the existing uh, decorative screens remained or remain or be replaced in kind. Uh, this concludes staff's report. Staff is available to answer any of the committee's questions and also the applicant and I believe the homeowner uh, might be here to provide public comment. Thank you. Great, thank you. Does anyone have any um, questions for staff? Go ahead, um, Vice Chair McKay. Have any um, proposed materials been submitted to staff that could be shared with the committee? Uh, no, Vice Chair, we have not received any uh, samples or of the materials. Questions? Okay, seeing no questions, um, we'd like to ask the applicant to come to the microphone, speak clearly, and state your name. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Stephen Dahl with Dahl Architects, the architects for the homeowner who's with us tonight, along with my sister, Tammy Cowan, the project manager. Uh, we're at 1134 El Centro Street in South Pasadena. Um, I wanted to thank you. Thanks to Savog. And thank you uh, back on May 3rd uh, for working with us. Uh, what you have tonight before you is a better project than, than last month. And, and it takes a, a team and, and we heard you, we listened and we've made the changes. There's no more of those uh, icky um, windows with the uh, cladding uh, that were not appropriate. Those are totally gone. Um, we're keeping much more of the existing windows in place. Um, even the 1977 uh, arches in the back that were not original, but I think you guys pointed out last time they're cool and they look good. They look better than what we were proposing. And, and darn it, I realize that now and it, it really is a, a better project. Um, so we're very proud to be back here. Um, we also um, want to apologize last time for some of the inconsistencies in the numbering system. Uh, Tammy and I have come up with a new numbering system that, that goes uh, clockwise around the home, first floor, second floor, so you can see every window straight through very easily, and all the numbers on the plans match the photos in your packet. We didn't want to have any uh, a worry or concern of, of losing track of any window, so they're all there. And Savog's idea of keeping the decorative screen doors is a great one, and we'd be happy to accommodate that as a condition. So um, I don't want to waste any more of your time. We'd love to answer any questions you might have. The homeowners here and, and uh, project managers here, I'm ready for any questions you might have. Thank you. Do the project manager and the homeowner want to come to the to field questions from? If they're really tough questions, I'll bring them up. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you. Do we have any questions for the applicant? Uh, go ahead, committee, committee member Chang. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we appreciate the improvement on the plan and on your uh, numbering system and, and the overall clarity of the plan, so we understand. I, I, my question is that I, I do see the detail of the window that you're going to a custom wood window shop to make the windows. The attachment from the window to the construction is not there. I just wanna make sure that wh whoever you go to, are they coming to the job site to feel measure, custom make this window to fit? Have to, 
Okay. And, and, and you and I know not one of those window openings is square. And so these are going to be uh, uh, quirky windows that match exactly. We don't want to touch that stucco. And I think you guys made it very clear last time. And you're right, it'd be so hard to match that, that uh, decorative uh, a patina on it over the years. So we'll, we'll remove the, the few windows that are going to be replaced, uh, measure the, everything beforehand, and find out how it's attached and get that new window in the exact same spot, not touching the surrounding stucco. Okay, so the, if there is any damage to the stucco and to the detail, uh, your plan sets that you will have the contract to repair it back to the original detail as, Important, as yeah. existing. Okay. So we don't want to change anything that, that is out there right now. Right, I want to make sure that's on the record. Oh, and, thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That, that's fine. That's all I have. Uh, committee member Batnij. So the intent here is to be replacing the windows that are there with something that is going to look exactly the same. Okay. So can you explain how some of the windows, I'm just not exactly clear. So it says custom wood, uh, the revised project so replace a mix of existing wood and, and aluminum windows with custom wood windows with seven, eight, seven eighth inch grills. So is that gonna be on, are seven eighth grills going to be on every window or how are you dealing with the fact that a lot of the existing windows were custom made with a lot less than seven eighth inch grills? So the muttons, some people call them grills, I call them muttons, uh, other people call them mullions, um, we, we did want to um, indicate that the new muttons will be seven eights, which may be uh, slightly different than some of the muttons that are in there now. Yes, um, with the um, energy efficient required uh, dual pane windows um, and, and today's standards, um, seven eights is, is going to be what the new muttons will be. So that, that could be a slight deviation from some of the windows that are there. I think that... I haven't actually measured every window, but I think some of those muttons are way less than seven eighths. So is that going to be a like for like looking exactly the same? The frames, the 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 jams, the heads uh, uh, will be all the same. The 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 wood material, um, the the exact shape. Uh, the muttons may uh, be slightly different. So let's look at just like, uh, and thank you for the, uh, the window numbering is a lot easier for us to refer to. So let's take, I don't know, um, window number eight. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of them that I think are very similar to this where the, uh, the horizontal Do we have window one? number eight is to remain. Okay, sorry. So um, the neat thing one. is if you look all the way, if you look at the floor plan on sheet A2, uh, you'll see all the way across the front on the ground level, uh, on, on the sides, everything's remaining. We're not we're not touching any of those windows. Those yeah, are it's really so, it's in the custom. Right, okay, so those are to remain. We're not touching any of those. It's just some of the windows in the back in the back yeah and, I mean, and then on the second floor in the bedrooms which are up high and and not so right close window, enough to measure that uh door g and window 20 it looks like for example like on near the balcony for example in the front yeah i doubt you're going to be able to see that window um drive by or look at the photos it's set back from the balcony with the overhang, it's in dark shadow. You, you're never even gonna see it. We could paint that window pink and you wouldn't even know it. Not that we would do such a thing. Um, I'm just looking at the windows in the back one by one too. We tried to keep as many of the windows as we could and especially the, the, the really uh, custom uh, special ones. It, it would be hard to do that. Although this company is amazing. We've worked with them before. So all It looks like all of the upstairs windows in the back would be good examples to, for us to discuss for um, in terms of my um, 
my point about the uh, so if you look at uh, just the upstairs um, upstairs in the back windows, for example, the horizontal lines are are very much in contrast to the heavier um, vertical lines of the windows, and that is repeated um, throughout many of the existing windows that are not going to be replaced. So putting um, if I'm not sure if I understand you correctly that that putting the seven to eight seven seven eighth inch windows are that's going to look very chunky if I understand correctly I think that that might look very chunky and um in in comparison to the style of the windows now I don't think so if you look at um, that would be on sheet a5 and so the back of the house would be the east elevation so on the left hand side the, the middle drawing and the bottom drawing you'll see the middle drawing is what's existing right now and the bottom one is what's being proposed so you'll see the before and after and it, it looks terrific and you'll see the windows and those horizontal uh, muttons all line up uh, on the existing windows some of them have them and some don't so um, those uh, in the middle on windows 30 29 30 and 31 are aluminum windows so we're doing new windows that more closely match windows 34 and 35 and so it'll be actually more consistent than now. Um, and those beautiful arched windows okay. are staying there So too. if you are, and I, and I know that th there's so many windows that we're talking about that I know that this can be, but so if we are keeping the existing look of the windows, let's say in the entire front, which means that those horizontal I don't know what you call them exactly. I get mixed up with all the window um, terms, but the um, the horizontal buttons, whatever, they look like less than five eighths. I would say that they are maybe even maybe even less than five eighths. Well, we've got stained glass windows, we've got leaded windows, we've got some thick uh, muttons, some thin muttons. It's, it's really quite eclectic on the front. It's just lovely. And it really has nothing to do with the rear. And you'll never see the, the windows on the front and the rear, of course, at the same time. So window three, window four, window five, window six, window seven, window eight, windows 26 and 27. I mean, it's not a few, it's most of them. That's what I'm trying to say. Window 11, window 12. I'm talking about those thin horizontal um, muttons that are certainly less. And so then in contrast to that is door D, which has probably seven eighths muttons. I'm going in order the packet of photos so that you can see. Um, so it's not like, oh, they're all mixed up. It's really nothing. The, the dominant design theme of these custom made windows for this house is thicker, um, vertical lines on the windows contrasted with with a much thinner horizontal line and that is an overall theme of the windows in the entire house so what i'm understanding from you is that you're not you're um not touching the front of the house and that in terms of not changing any windows significantly or on most the ground, of them are on the ground exist. level we are on the second level okay so <laughs> already brought that up the the window yes. set on the balcony in the shadow yes i understand that the balcony may be less visible but that doesn't mean that they're you know that they're not they're just as important overwhelming number of windows that were custom made originally for this house have this theme seven seven eight is a very chunky very modern size of mutton um, that is very unusual on any older home in San Marino. It's very unusual, if not unheard of for that time. So if they're going to be making custom windows, I don't really understand why they would be putting seventh, eighth inch muttons on there at all. I know that the, that staff over the counter used to say, you cannot replace a half inch mountain with a with a with even a five eighth or or an, a, a seven eighth. Certainly, sometimes they would they would um, they would they would they would reject a seventh eighth um, um, 
working in San Marino for for many decades, the the maximum has been seven eighths, and that's what what we're sticking to here. Let me let me can I follow up on that a little bit? Can is there a, a way you can decrease that size, and and make them more compatible with the house? I'm not sure. As I mentioned before, we we have dual pane windows, energy efficiency and i'm not sure if we can make them small or not i'd have to check with the manufacturer you're putting the dual glaze in the new ones but the original windows that you're going to leave will be a single pane correct i, I don't uh, i don't i'm sure this varies by manufacturer but i i am i can say with certainty that they can be low, less than a seventh h even with a, a higher energy efficient window Uh, yeah, I mean, my main, my main point, I think, um, maybe have been made that seventh age and seventh, seven, eighth inch muntins are not the like for like uh, that I think is being implied to us. Any other questions? Anyone else have a question for the applicant? Uh, Vice Chair McKay. Have you discussed with staff how we're going to um, be able to confirm that um, the new windows which are being custom made are uh, like for like, aside from the measurements, um, just in terms of the, the wood windows being um, compatible and because we don't have any color renderings and we don't have any samples um, but I understand you're working with somebody very established. That's what it sounds like. I believe the packet that Tammy has was, was in your packet, uh, color renderings of those windows should be in the staff report. Yeah. Was, I, I, I had raised with staff that we didn't have, um, oh, I'm so any sorry. Color we renderings. Yeah, submitted that in. I don't know how it didn't get to you. So this was was submitted. You're saying yes. Yes. Oh, electronically. I don't think this was in our package. No. Vice Chair, I can make copies for the, the committee. I'm I'm wondering how we're going to. I think you need to pass it back real pass it down yeah, real fast. It's it's and then. We can decide it for you. I mean, some of us can tell instantly. What does the first page represent? Is from the website of the window and door company. So it's the showcase for B and B doors and windows. Yes, is B and B the manufacturer of the window? So they fabricate it actually in Southern California, in San Fernando, right? And uh, your um, they will come P prime. Uh, paint on the site, how is it finish? Do you know how, when you order it, how would that come in? Are they P finish or P I, fine finish? I do not finish? know that. I have an idea how you want to handle it because I want to make sure that the final finish is critical. And um, uh, Typically, the windows we're working with and, and B&B, they, they come pre-primed, uh, so everything is completely covered. And then we'll be hand painting them on site so we can match all the, the colors right there. And it's important we'll be working with a homeowner to, to get the, the colors up uh, on site with the, the lighting and everything to make sure everything's consistent all the way around. Even if we picked a color, it wouldn't be exactly right unless we just did it right out there at the site. So it's important that they, they are uh, factory pre-primed so they can get all the edges and, and everything else, but we'll be painting them on site. It's also your intention to, to paint all the windows 
the same color existing to you upstairs, downstairs, throughout. It, it's That's time. Just, so the, even the existing ones that will be remaining will be painted. So everything will be exactly the same. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have um, another question. Um, the windows that are shown, let's say windows 44 to 47 and 39 to 43, um, which, which way is that? Those are facing the back? The south, okay. Last time we were going to be replacing all those, um, now we're going to be leaving all those in, exactly in, in place as they are. Okay, the 39 to 43 and 44 to 47? Uh, I'm looking at the south elevation of 39 through 47, that whole series across there is all going to be staying as is. I think it's an old infield uh, sleeping porch. Right. They're, they're probably not original, but we're keeping them anyway. Yeah. Yeah, they look like they may have may have been added. Um, I, th I think I saw a permit that they were added. Um, Question about this: you're you're replacing the whole frame of the window. You're going to be removing the wood frame, the whole window, and yeah. the sash. Yeah. So here's here's the so, stucco, and then here's the window. This window is going to come out. So you're going to disturb the stucco. I'm hoping not. Well, it, it's attached. So you can, why can't you just replace the, the casement windows and leave their remaining frame in place? Uh, they don't. They don't really build windows that way. It, it's a whole set. They've got to tie together. I mean, I have an old house, and I know that I can have a custom window made to fit in my original frame. I guess the, some of the real simple ones, you can just replace the window pane portion only. But based on what I see on the detail, the entire yeah. frame, sash, everything is coming to one piece. It's already P manufactured and they operate correctly. That's why I ask them on the detail when they fit it back, they have to attach back to the original wood framing and and patch the stucco yeah, per se. And, and make it, it look like a region. And the interior doesn't have anything. I mean, I know not under a purview. The interior doesn't look like this inside the house at all. There's none of this boxy wood finish. It's very clean inside. You know, you can see the bull nose sides. Yeah, the, the whole window frame and sill top, everything come in one window. It's gonna look much different than the original windows the simplicity of the original wood window now. This is gonna be much more boxy and, and it's gonna be more about the frame. And, and the, the sash is so thick in, in the original windows. No? With the I mean, double with the double pane, yeah. The well, entire window will okay. be heavy and thicker uh, because you got two panes of glass instead of one. And meeting the energy calculation and all of that, and then meeting today's requirement for seismic and for energy go, the window will be much stronger than the old days. Uh, a single pane, really thin glass and a thin button. That's why the buttons are bigger and the glass is thicker in order to meet the requirement. Yes. But again, I don't believe I don't believe that the buttons need to be as big as they are. I, I was think, yeah. I'm sorry. I was thinking about asking the the um, architect and the owner to contact the manufacturer and see if they can do something smaller. I've seen smaller ones down to three quarters and even five eighths. I've, I've, I know that I have seen five eighths. It's more than five eight may be difficult, but five eight is doable. And and um, yeah, having the smaller will be very difficult to do it correctly. Five eight is most likely yeah. available. Five eight will be something that will be look very much like the existing. So. I would I would love to contact the manufacturer if this can be a condition of approval that we can follow up with staff. 
that, that we will uh, um, uh, contact them, share everything with Savog and, and see if we can uh, more closely replicate those muttons to how they are out there right now. And then they do vary. And if we can go down to three quarters or five eighths, and then that's what's there, then, then we will certainly do that. There, there's no reason not to, if that's possible. One more question. I just wanna make sure that these are um, true divided lights and that the mullions are not, are not snapped on like... Um, that, that's the problem with the, the mutton size. The, the, the smaller you go, it, it's more of, of a grid on the, the front and the back and the dividers. It, uh, I'm not sure if we can go smaller than seven eighths and have them be the true divided. That, that's the real rub. Right now they're true divided is what you're, they're yes. true divided, yeah. what you're proposing. Uh, you go smaller than that and it just, you need more substance in the, the uh, support. And I just want to clarify, none of first floor front windows will be replaced. And, and, and continuing on the sides as well. Sides. But really uh, is, is all original walking by, getting up close, wrapping all the way around. So even looking, you know, at an angle from the side, the front and the sides, that, that's critical. Those just stay absolutely original. I feel like upstairs, it's it's going to be a little bit more distant. It's okay, and, and we're in shadow on the balcony. I feel better about that. And the bedrooms are just critical for, for that second floor with the, the energy and the sun and, and the noise and everything with the dual pane is going to make a big difference. The, the property is vacant? Right now, yes. Quite some time, correct? So, love to get somebody back in there as quick as we can. Go ahead. One more statement. I, I am reading the BNB manufacturer brochure. Uh, every window can be built to your specification, meaning that if you tell them that you want that mutton size to be smaller, according to what they claim they can do it. So you may- Well, you know, true divided light is, is a different thing. And sure, I would say the same thing. Every window's custom, they can do whatever, but but some things just aren't possible. Yeah. So I would say, talk to them and see if they yeah. can that happen. That's my first call in the morning. And I, we don't, there's no requirement that you remain- with one manufacturer, there are many manufacturers of windows that can probably achieve uh, more of the look because what I understand is that, you know, I, and, and it's great that you're leaving so many of the existing windows, like the, the whole lower level that you're proposing to leave the whole lower level on all the sides, but that creates the dominant theme of, of this, you know, much more delicate horizontal look and, and Essentially, by leaving all of those, you're creating a dominant theme or retaining the dominant theme of the windows that exists. I, I, and so I respectfully by, disagree. The, the, the windows that are existing have both thick and thin. That They're very unique, and they're not all the same, all the muttons. It's true that they're not all the same, but what I have gone through is three door, windows numbers, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 26, 27, 11, 12, 13, 15, 20, 21, 24, 25, 26, 27, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, all have that dominant theme. I understand that there are more windows than that, but that those are certainly the majority. And, not and if just we can make a, them a smaller, we, we certainly will, yeah. I don't have any more questions. Great. Um, is there anyone here who would like to make a public comment? Anyone online? If you'd like to make a public comment for this item, you can unmute yourself. If not, we will move on. Okay, I guess maybe for item two. We'll move on. I will close the public comments and move on to committee member discussion. 
would like to start. Good committee member Chow. Um, yes, I think that, well, overall, the, the, the project is definitely a, a better project. I certainly agree with that. Um, in the meantime, I uh, also uh, share the concern that um, committee member uh, Bednich um, discussed and uh, brought up um, because of the distinct um, design of the existing windows with the thicker, wider vertical buttons um, combined with the thinner, uh, thinner ones, horizontal ones. It, it definitely has a very uh, interesting and uh, uh, a look to it. So, um, so the on the one hand, I can I would like to, and also I think I can support the project moving forward. But my question, um, I think um, I would like to see how we are going to address the concern that uh, one is the stucco um, repairment uh, potential, uh, any potential damages. I think that can be a condition that, uh, um, that we can ask staff to inspect to uh, make sure that uh, it's it, it's it's matching. Um, should there be any uh, repairman uh, stucco repairman needed? Um, but a bigger question is probably regarding the 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 muttons. Um, you know, if we say that okay, um, find out what's available. Can we? make it narrower down to five eighths or three quarter, then we kind of have to rely on the applicant's information because uh, I don't know if that's really workable uh, with staff or how, how that can be figured out. So um, that's where I'm at. Thank you very much. Committee member Batnish. I um, mean, yeah, I mean, certainly this is, you know, an improvement um, on, on what we saw earlier, but I was really shocked when I was reading the report and saw seven eighths uh, grills because and then we were told that this is like, you know, really exactly the same as <laughs> we're not changing anything because that's a that's a major change. Um, so and I know it is possible. I personally know 100 percent certainty that it's possible to <clears throat> get down to five eighths in uh, five, five. I know I have trouble saying this five eighths inch grills or mountains or <clears throat> whatever we want to call them um, while having dual pane windows. Um, you know, I can only imagine that uh, it is possible to go further down. I mean, there might be some, uh, you know, some some loss and like we might not be able to get the the absolute best energy rating, but I think that you might achieve a, a, a much better one that exists now and <clears throat> kind of compromise between, you know, rotating the, the current look and, and of course, uh, wanting a higher energy rating, which uh, we can all appreciate. So um, I would imagine if you look at uh, other manufacturers and uh, ask, uh, you know, how how close can we get to this very delicate munions that are on there that create this dominant style? And it's not all of the munions. It's not all of the grills. It's just those horizontal ones. So that might um, might be helpful, but uh, I, I, I would uh, I would hope that the applicant could come back and just explore that issue and uh, just uh, come back and uh, propose something that's going to look more like uh, like what we've got in front of us. Thank you, Committee Member Cheng. Uh, I guess overall the the project is an improvement from what we saw before, um, especially with the um, improvement in the interior floor plan, trying to get it to a, a modern livable place uh, and, 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 this, and incorporate all the window changes per the owner's wish is the right thing to do. Um, the, the only way that we can actually get what we want is to go through uh, what they're proposing, which is a custom wood window. Uh, any of the other aluminum clad window has a lot of um, restriction of fitting in what the existing home is and trying to achieve what we got. 
So I think the 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 uh, applicant proposed something correctly uh, that these wood window manufacturers are not that many around anymore because most people are not buying a wood window, a custom made wood window. And I am I am confident that they can work with the manufacturer to uh, work with the mutton size. Uh, since they have to pretty much custom made this window anyway uh, to make it work. So uh, I can support the project. I would, um, I personally feel comfortable if we can leave it to staff to work with them. I would say anything uh, smaller than three quarters would be an acceptable acceptance on the size. Five, eight will be preferable and uh, three quarters will be the maximum. So uh, that I can stand on. Uh, because all they got to do is just work with the manufacturer to find it. Because I know some manufacturer would do it for smaller than the three quarters. So then we have to see the chair. Go ahead. So we would, if we know that, if, if we know that there are manufacturers that can do less than three quarters, then, you know, why wouldn't we be expecting less than three quarters? Well, I guess maybe uh, the solution is um, to make a condition saying that it has to be the size and under. Uh, if it meets that um, condition, then they can move forward, work with the staff. Our, our comments, um, Vice Chair McKay. I, I want to um, thank the applicant for putting in what is obviously a lot of work and effort into bringing us what is a much improved project. So it's not uh, that that hasn't been uh, observed and appreciated. The number of windows that are remaining original, greatly appreciated. The replacement of windows with custom wood. I don't wanna leave these to the side. This is very important. And the clarity and improvement and the accuracy of the plans um, this is what we had asked for, and so you have. So we 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 see it, we notice it, and we appreciate it. It's unfortunate that the B and B brochure uh, was not shared with the committee. It was something that was on my mind, not seeing um, that kind of uh, that point of reference, that point of information. Uh, but we have it now. Um, I share with my co fellow committee members that this is a distinctive uh, a home with distinctive style and design. And you're hearing concerns and hesitancy from the committee, and that's because this is a home of significance. Um, it is a potential historic resource. And as we stated last time, it is on the entrance to the city on the way to the Huntington Library. It's, it, it, it must be said for the record. So I would hope we could approve this tonight with very narrowly drawn conditions. And I would appreciate some further discussion about what those are. Uh, otherwise, we're looking at another continuance, which is unfortunate. Um, I think that we could really draw some narrow conditions to satisfy the committee members who have concerns. I think we all have concerns. Some have more concerns than others. Um, and so I would like to invite that discussion. Uh, I, I share the concerns of my uh, fellow committee members. And I think um, I too appreciate all the work that the applicant has uh, done to bring the project um, into the compatibility with itself and with this very important neighborhood. And I, I do, for the record, want to state that the architect is Everett Phipps Babcock, who uh, did come here and work for Walt Snep. He was already an accomplished architect, came here later in his life, um, built this home, designed this home and the home next door. He designed his own house for himself on Rosalind and then died in 1928. So, so um, he is considered a, a significant architect. He's listed in um, the uh, Historic Preservation um, Survey of Pasadena. And his um, he designed the Singer Building, which is on Colorado, which is a beautiful Mediterranean commercial building. And he also um, built the condominiums La Casa Torre that are on the historic, uh, that are historic landmark in Pasadena. So I, I think that he's the least known architect for this street, 
entering into the Huntington Library that we all know the street so well and associate it so much with so much pride uh, because it is a street that many people get their first impression when they come to San Marino to visit the Huntington Library. And I have great respect for everyone who owns homes on this street and has um, accepted the challenge and um, of, of maintaining these beautiful homes that are like pieces of art. Um, so thank you very much. Um, they are really beautiful homes and um, many people um, admire them and, and, and like the view and, uh, and it really makes them really important in the city. Uh, um, I can't state it enough. So I, I, I also um, appreciate all the work to make it, uh, to not to destroy those windows in the front uh, that are so important to the architecture. Um, I am not as concerned about the back windows facing the back, but I do understand the compatibility with the whole house. Um, and I think that I would like to support the project. And I think everyone here would like to support it, but we really are, um, are looking for that smaller mutton, the thinner mutton on the horizontal line. And if somebody either, I mean, we could continue it to look more uh, at this manufacturer to find out um, the capabilities that they have, um, or we could make that very strict um, condition of approval. We can talk about it before we make a motion. Do you wanna? Did one of you want to go ahead? Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I was just going to um, say perhaps we should, um, before we start talking about making a condition, should we ask the applicant if they would accept a condition of a certain uh, uh, size before we, because we might be, they might have another uh, plan. Mike on? Thank you. I, I think what would benefit um, both the applicant and um, the committee is that the committee uh, enter into its dialogue, formulate conditions, and once those conditions are formulated, ask the applicant if they're uh, open to those conditions instead of going one through one. After the motion is made with the condition, then ask. Sorry. What I suggest is that once uh, the committee feels that they have the conditions in place, dialogue with the applicant, and then once that has been established, you can then enter a formal. Any member Chow. Thank you. So I think based on, mainly on um, what committee member Chen had mentioned, and also I uh, commented, um, maybe we could consider there are two conditions, uh, certainly anything else the um, uh, committee can think of. So I think the first one is uh, if any of the stucco, uh, current stucco is damaged, um, the, um, the city needs to inspect that and uh, make sure that it's, it's repaired properly and match the existing stucco. And the second one is that um, the horrors, all the windows being replaced needs to be like for like wood window as stated in the horizontal mountains. Ideally, this is where I'm, I'm open, um, ideally be um, restricted to no thicker than either five eighth or three quarter. Um, I think ideally it would be five eighth. Um, and if they can meet that requirement and um, they they can go forward. I I I completely agree. If they can get it down to five eight, then I think anything smaller will not work uh, because structurally you want to make sure that there's enough bite to keep the double glass in place. But but five eight is something that they I think they can achieve that. So if they cannot, then they can come back to us. But I agree with that. Yeah. And then and then the uh, condition that was already present, committee member Chow. The condition that was already present from staff needs to be mentioned. Um, I don't have that page, page in front of me, the, so maybe in front of you. Yes. But the the other um, comment is that that they're labeled as screen doors, and the front door 
I don't know technically what we call it. I want to call it a storm door, but I'm not sure what it's. We called. have it. We have there's the glass on the front door. It's it's glass with the wrought iron and the glass. And just to remind the committee, the the applicant accepted the condition that staff had proposed. Um, so that doesn't need to be included. It will be included in the motion, but it doesn't necessarily need to be included in the discussion. Oh, really? It, well, don't, it has to be in the motion. Though. It has to be in the That's motion. all I was saying. Yeah, it has to be in the motion, but they, they, the applicant accepted that condition. But it was I think chair. I think chair has a bit of a, just the word, what, the word. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, yeah. So it's a, it's a screen door in the, in the staff Back. report, and it, but it doesn't actually have a screen on it. It has mm -hmm. a glass. It's wrought iron with glass instead of screen. So I don't know if that's technically a screen door or a storm door, but I don't. I'm, uh, oh, oh, is that right? Wow. Plexiglass or I don't know. So, so, but I think it's um, if we want to, if that's considered a screen door. I'm looking for you guys. Right. So let's call it the existing screen slash storm door. I'm not sure what to call that, but do we need to, if you, if we need to differentiate that, specify that in our motion, what do you think? Um, if it being replaced, we, that we door can, in the we front. Clarify it. We can just make sure it is on the record. That's all. Whatever. What is that technically called? That door? <laughs> is it a screen door technically? Do we, is that, do, can we assume that that's what it is? Well, I think if it's already clearly identified with the name screen door yeah. and, and staff okay. knows exactly which doors we're referring to, then okay. it would be sufficient. Yeah, so just to clarify, um, uh, the entry door, the front door is door A, and um, it can be conditioned that the glass um, in front of door A be clear, maintained the clear glass clear yeah. material uh yes on the red iron that resembles a, a door yeah so uh, this wasn't uh, identified in the scope of work um but if you want to reiterate it um to oh. uh, to keep it part of not being part touched of is it not being touched that's correct but it's part of the conditions right well i guess it's not being touched uh you could reiterate it in the conditions but didn't you, i thought it was a recommended condition uh, so in the condition that a staff is recommending, I was uh, it was specifically for the screen doors on the other um, doors because the front door is not being touched. So I didn't Got it. include that in the language. I'm sorry. I thought that's what you're talking about. And you're sorry. Okay. sorry to confuse everybody. That clarification was helpful. For you. Yeah. Okay. So I think we're, so we're not adding any other doors to be conditioned or no, we're just the, keeping the, the just, just keeping the staff position uh, as it was in the staff report. How does the committee feel about those? Yeah, I, I would be okay with that. I can support the five eight. Okay, okay. So given that we have a list of conditions. I think we agreed on the condition. And I think per director's direction is to see if applicant would like to consider that yes. to be an acceptable direction. Uh, do we would like to have you come back to the microphone or can we do it from I'd like to open the public comment? Okay, I'd like to open, open the public hearing. The public hearing and invite you to come back to the and so we've discussed um, the approval with the condition of, of five to eighth inch mutton on the horizontal line. No more than five eighths inch. Um, is your applicant uh, willing to accept that condition? I, I heard that the preferred was five eighths and, and, and no more than three quarters maximum. I'm not Somebody sure. did state that, but yeah. I think overall, the majority of us would like to see a five eighths. Well, whatever the condition is, is the condition. That's why I'd like it clarified first, because I heard three quarters max, five eights preferred several um, times. Actually, a few of us, I think probably over three, I, or five eights. I, I, I don't I know. You guys the five make a decision so, and then we'll deal with it. Okay. It, the consensus was five eights. If, 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 if the committee would like to reconsider that, you can do so. But if 
my understanding was that the committee as a whole favored no more than five eighths. Correct. So okay. I believe that would be the question posed now to the applicant. Thank you. And, and uh, th that's a terrific uh, concept and idea. I have absolutely no idea whether we can make ma make that or not. Um, uh, Commissioner Chang mentioned that he knows it's possible. Uh, post COVID is a completely different world. Uh, even crappy windows are, are five to eight months lead time. Uh, good windows can be a year out. Uh, so many of these, as you know, uh, Commissioner Chang, uh, so many of these local custom wood manufacturers are just out of business. There's very few left. I don't know if we can do the five eights. Uh, we're going to try, and I hear the condition. If we can't, I guess we'll have to come back. Make a motion. Someone like to try to make the motion? You, you want to close the public hearing? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll close the public hearing. And... Go back to close the public hearing. Yeah. Okay. Um, Have I closed the public hearing? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Okay. I heard a first from committee member Chow. Did I hear a second? I was, I was wait, wait. A motion. If that was a motion, wait. there was we no motion. motion yet. There was no motion. Oh, it was, okay, it was discussion. discussion. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Chow, you want to go ahead and yes. finish your motion? <laughs> yes. <laughs> To, uh, first. Go ahead, committee member Chow. Okay, um, so I'll give it a try. Um, I move to approve DR 23-03 with the following three conditions. Um, the first is regarding the screen doors per staff recommendation and the condition that those screen doors to be remain or be replaced in kind to match the existing design. The second condition is that any stucco work, exterior stucco work, if damaged, needs to be repaired to match the existing stucco work um, in the interior. I mean, I'm sorry, um, on the outside exterior. So in the third condition is the size of the proposed muttons. Um, all the horizontal, the, in particular, particularly uh, referring to the horizontal uh, wooden muttons um, where uh, windows are replaced, these muttons uh, cannot be wider than five eighths uh, of an inch. Um, and there are wood windows, um, like for like. Those are the three conditions. Um, did you specify just horizontal? I did. Just to be clear, those are the horizontal buttons. It just the horizontal? Is that possible? Just I the think horizontal. It's quite clear. I I, it's I, a horizontal, just a horizontal five eight. Well, most of the windows are horizontal design anyway. But not the, oh, yeah. Okay. Because so they're, oh, they're the case. Yeah. That, so I guess. Yeah. Right. Just, yeah, there is no. Right. Exactly. Okay. I think we're good with that, with the horizontal. What do we like? Do we have a second? I second a motion. Roll call. Committee member Batnish. I'm sorry, your mic? Yes. Committee member Chow? Yes. Committee member Chang? Yes. Vice Chair McKay? Yes. And Chair Lacon? Yes. Okay, that's a 5 0 approval with the conditions of approval. Thank you very much. And we'll move on to item number two. Um, Welcome. Do you have a staff who will be presenting item number two? Thank you, Chair. That will also be me. Uh, for the record, Assistant Planner Savak Sasunian. Uh, item number two is design review case number DR22-59 at 2560 Canterbury Road. 
the applicant is proposing to replace existing aluminum casement, fixed, and louver windows with Marvin aluminum clad sliding and double hung windows in the stone white color. The I'm sorry, the project is subject to design review since the proposal is not in accordance with the window uh, replacement procedures and will change the appearance of the structure. Staff is referencing windows numbered one through nine to guide this review since a number of the windows were replaced without permits. The existing windows include either variations of casement and fixed windows or louver windows. The new windows are either sliding or double hung and do not feature the same pattern of the muntins or grills as the existing windows. Uh, staff finds compatibility within the legal neighborhood and consistency with the ranch architectural style. Staff also supports the removal of the louver windows since they do not meet today's energy efficiency standards. Uh, finally, staff recommends approval on the condition that the applicant shall redo the stucco and paint around the windows to match the existing facade. Uh, for the record, uh, I'd like to note the date on the staff report is incorrect. It reads June 7th when it should read today's date, June 21st. Uh, and also um, under the recommendation, it should state the proposed window project for the CEQA exemption and not the uh, proposed roofing project. So I apologize for that mistake. That concludes staff's report and staff is available to answer the committee's questions. Uh, the project architect and the homeowner are on Zoom. Uh, they'll provide public comment afterwards. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone have any questions for our staff? Seeing no questions from staff. Uh, for staff, I would like to ask the applicant to, is the applicant gonna be presenting online on Zoom or are they gonna be in part? Okay. Yes, the applicant is on Zoom. Okay. Ask them to unmute themselves and to go ahead. Hello. State your name and your address. Yeah, yes, uh, my name is Scott Davis. I am the architect working on the project uh, for uh, company at Studio. And uh, we are at uh, in Long Beach, California. Um, we were brought on to prepare this application after several of the windows were already installed and the windows had been ordered and delivered. Um, and I believe that, you know, unfortunately the homeowner Olivia was not properly guided or misled by the previous contractor regarding the proper course of action for getting permits and approvals for these new windows. Um, however, uh, that being said, um, I do see that the windows that are uh, ready to be installed are on the pre-approved pre list. And um, we hope that um, we can come to some sort of agreement with the committee in terms of moving forward with her project to get her, her work wrapped up. Um, we read and agree with the conditions, um, specifically the stucco work to make sure that the existing stucco that was broken and, and remade be um, corrected and I assuming there would be a, an on-site um, uh, inspection or you know, check by staff to see that the, the new stucco work is done appropriately. Um, but other than that, we um, welcome your comments and guidance. And that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? Committee member Cheng? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. I just want to uh, understand on the retrofit frame size on your window schedule. Certain window has a um, discrepancy of about inch and a half, uh, but it's not consistent. Some are one inch, some are inch and a half, some are exactly. Uh, have you or your manufacturer uh, from uh, Marvin been out there, feel measured, and make sure that the the frame size are correct. In fact, because if you look at one A, one B, inch and a half, three 
B and uh, 3A are eight, one inch. Uh, when it goes down to 11 and 12, they were exact. D do you know what the reason is? Um, so given that we are in a unique situation where we already had the windows available, um, we knew which windows were ready for which one that was going to be replaced. So um, what we've given is, is just our documentation of the existing windows that are available. And now if the, the new contractor who is going to be completing this work finds that, that what has been ordered and what is um, set to be retrofit is not going to work, um, I would imagine there have to be some replacements made or uh, we would have to come back to staff and discuss you know, appropriate um, changes or you know, ordering new windows if, if possible or if, if that's um, required. Uh, but other than that, I, you know, given that we were sort of taking this on um, mid uh, project, um, we're just sort of documenting what's available and, and hoping that we can come to some sort of good terms to, to complete the project. So if I hear you correctly, you, you're saying that the they will go back to the field and field measure it, measure it again in detail and try to um, fit into an existing opening. I just want to make sure what your process is. Uh, the problem of, of this plan is once it's approved and if you come back and it doesn't work and if they if you end up with a window that is inch and a half smaller than the existing opening and you Try to fill the gap, it'll be a disaster. Mm -hmm. And the window is larger, inch and a half, than the existing opening. You have to break the stucco to make it fit. That will be a problem too. Have you, as an architect, been out there, check the window details to the stucco and to the drywall condition and see how this Marvin window, this aluminum clad window, mm -hmm. fits? has that been worked out? Okay, yeah, no, I haven't done that um, myself, but um, I can do that uh, to check uh, what's there existing and, and what's there to be replaced, just to see if there's any potential, um, you know, difficulties or errors that, um, that were previously made with the uh, window order. Yeah, I appreciate that because what, over the years, what we had problem is that we had, um, plans in and contractor rely on the plan, order the wrong window size. And then, mm -hmm. and then what, by the time we went out there, it's got an inch on both sides or, or half inch on top or half inch at the bottom. And then they try to patch those with something. Uh, right. Happened years ago. And I, I just have a lot of headache with that. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it will never come out right. Uh, so I think it is as a responsible architect, you should, help them to understand how the uh, Marvin uh, clad window detail fit into the existing opening and come up with a detail for us and for yourself too, and for the contractor to understand how they're going to install it. I think that will help the homeowner a lot. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Thank you. Something I can do. Great. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay. No other questions. Um, then we will ask for public comments. Is there anyone here who would like to speak about the project? Anyone online? No one here. So I'd like to cl close the public comment portion and move to committee member discussion. Um, committee member Cheng. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I, I, I can support the project but not with the detail that is in front of us. So I, I would recommend the uh, architect and the applicant to, to spend a little bit more time and effort to narrow down the correct size of the opening and the window details and how they fit and come back with uh, some additional details so that, so that the entire uh, staff and the body can rely on the accuracy of that, and then we can just keep it going. But but I can support the the idea and the merit of the um, 
replacement. Meeting Member Batnish. Um, <clears throat> I think that Committee Member Cheng's uh, uh, questions of the applicant seem to be um, uh, useful and, you know, brought up that the applicant will, you know, kind of dot the I's and cross the T's a little bit. And so I suppose that we would just, um, I, I would suggest maybe um, just uh, uh, letting this go one more time and hopefully next time we can um, have something in front of us that everybody can rely on and make sure that can we, can we, can we remember member Cheng said uh, uh, prevent some some potential problems. Any member Chow? Thank you. Um, yes, I agree. Um, so I think I can support a continuance. Vice Chair McKay. I'll echo those sentiments and support a continuance. The discussion following committee member Chang's questions and comments was revelatory and uh, much appreciated. Uh, and let's avoid a problem down the line. And um, I can I can support the overall idea, but let's continue it for that uh, clarity and correction. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Here, may I clarify something for the record? Please go ahead. I'm sorry if the staff report didn't make it clear. Um, for the committee's consideration, the homeowner uh, has the windows purchased and in her garage already, um, not to whether that changes your decision or not. But um, I was, um, I had operated under the assumption that the slight difference was um, due to the window fitting into the existing um, frame of it. Uh, I was, I was, I've learned during my time here that there's uh, some slight variation and it might add some thickness to the sash on the side. I don't know if that addresses the committee's concern, but of course, if you wanted to continue the project, um, you're welcome to. I don't mean to, I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. If, if I may answer to that, I, I didn't know that, but the fact that they seem to already have the window, that make it even more important for the architect to check that, because I want to make sure that the bot window can fit in correctly. Now, not that we worry about one inch and a half inch there, but how that's being attached and how the stucco is going to finish become very important. So I think the architect on, online now understand that he would have to check those conditions on the jam and on the head and bottom and the sill, because they can always come back with the correct detail to make it look right, uh, even with the existing window. But I worry about the fact that to leave it to the contractor to do whatever is in the garage and if they don't fit, we got a big problem in front of us. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. And um, I agree with my fellow committee members here, and I could support the continuance, um, basically agreeing with what committee member Chang has stated. I think we all have a, that's a consensus. Um, if someone would like to make a motion, go ahead. Uh, I, I move to continue um, design review case number DR22-59 to a day uncertain and allow the architect to view investigate the existing window condition in comparing with the windows that already been purchased by the homeowner and come back with a correct um, uh, architecture detail for the installation. And if there is any stucco modification and uh, the architecture plan should uh, fully reflect what that condition so this committee member understand how the final project will look at the end. You have a second? I'll second. Roll call. Committee member Batnij? Yes. Committee member Chow? Yes. Committee member Chang? Yes. Vice Chair McKay? Yes. And Chair Lee Gong? Yes. I will vote for continuance to a date uncertain. Thank you very much. We will move on to number three, new business. We'll discussion of the design review committee's joint meeting with city, city council. Would you, Vector, are you gonna be um, starting the discussion or should I just discuss with my fellow committee members? 
Sure. I, will, I can provide some insights in terms of the experience we had with the joint meeting with the Planning Commission. Uh, Planning Commission had provided staff with a number of items that they wanted to discuss. Uh, based on that experience, it's my recommendation, it's staff's recommendation that um, the committee agree on three topics. Um, the format of this meeting is going to be an hour long and it goes really fast. There will be a dialogue between the committee and the city council. And so by concentrating on three uh, on three topics, uh, I think at least you get the assurance that you'll have time to discuss those in detail. And then after that, any any topic then, you know, would be able uh, to be discussed time permitting. Um, so that's that that's staff's recommendation. And uh, I'll take it back. I'll bring it back to you, Chair. Anyone like to start off with some of um, maybe start off with three of your sure. go ahead and we'll start on the side and then we'll go along and then we'll discuss um, if you want to take. Okay. And, uh, you know, minutes. forgive me if I, I don't know if, if this is just a, a, a real, you know, freeform discussion or if this uh, I may be bringing up things that have nothing to do or don't exactly have something to do with DRC. But I think just, it's freeform. And I think if okay. we start getting off track or too long, okay. we'll start right. move. We'll continue. Yeah. We'll I have two things. Yeah, so um, the first thing is that uh, a lot of times when we speak about compatibility and incompatibility, uh, you know, with so in DRC, we see a lot of like additions to the back, for example. A lot of times, uh, the uh, co compatibility and incompatibility has to do with, um, you know, just eliminating uh, a lot of uh, eliminating any, any sort of open space in, in the back of the house. And a lot of that times that creates an incompatibility with other homes nearby, other homes in the neighborhood, um, and, and also uh, an incompatibility with itself. Um, for that reason, I would like to see uh, some sort of uh, a discussion or um, about creating guidelines for um, impermeable coverage in the back. I know we have that in the front. And, um, you know, we are, we are a community that was formed uh, intentionally. It was actually formed by Huntington as a quote, garden city. And so to eliminate any space in the back and just cover everything with concrete, you know, we're bringing up a lot of, uh, a lot of things that, that um, you know, deal with, that affect some level of compatibility. Um, so uh, I was just wondering about, about uh, uh, impermeable coverage, not just in the front of the home, but in the back of the home. Uh, that, that's an excellent point. And that's a, a, an actual not a, a point that your peers with the uh, Planning Commission have raised. Mm -hmm. And during the joint meeting, there was some discussion about that and direction from uh, council to for staff to at one point take a look at that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm not going to dictate that you should not discuss that, but because it's an issue that was already discussed and and city council provided direction. I'll leave it up to you whether you want to reinforce that or if you want to, you know, if you ultimately decide to have that as a topic. I mean, I I, I would say like, I don't, I don't know what the answer to that is, but I would say that, you know, at least mentioning it might uh, um, underscore uh, the fact that I, I guess the, that planning commission had brought that up. And I think as we go down the line, we can see if other people have. Sure, that, sure. Yeah, it may, not, well. it may only be me. Right. Um, it may. And yeah. then the, the, <laughs> the second thing is, uh, uh, which again, like, I'm not sure where we fit into this exactly, but um, uh, and I'm not sure we fit into this kind of a recommendation, but I, I just hear again and again through the years of being um, involved in DRC and, and just making a lot of observations on my own that, um, you know, we make conditions and uh, other bodies make conditions and plans are approved. And of course, plans are um, have a lot of detail. Um, but a lot, I'm just wondering if the city could benefit from, um, uh, and maybe, maybe this is, is, is in the works, I don't know, from um, increased level of um, inspections that are, you know, very detailed that um, maybe currently the city doesn't, you know, have time, have time to do. I don't know how, how that works. When I say inspections, I mean, checking that every single thing in the plants is, you know, including the Munton sizes and all these small things 
things that all add up, you know, they're drops in the bucket that really create these, you know, um, talking about like yeah, yeah. compliance with yes, the plan. Like compliance and, inspections, and inspections of what has been approved. I, I think that's more of a staffing issue. I, I don't know if that would be under the purview. I, I don't know if it's something that the DRC can, I mean, you can bring up any subject, but I don't know that that would be something that would probably benefit um, this body. What I can tell you is that um, inspections have increased, and that's the reason why I have a lot of difficult conversations with homeowners and why I keep repeating during not only DRC, but Planning Commission and City Council whenever I have an opportunity to for applicants to please not make any changes prior to speaking with staff. Um, so again, that I think this staff has done a great job just checking these plans. And again, some of these, some of these projects are carryovers. We were not involved. We have no history. And so we are looking at these plans, cross-referencing with the work and seeing that it's not compatible. We then, you know, have those difficult conversations. Uh, fortunately enough, uh, the majority of the time we do, um, we do uh, have the applicant uh, go back and change. And in some cases, they have to come before either your planning commission and ask for a, an amendment. Um, so, but but I think that's more of a staffing. Yeah, um, I'll just say this one sentence, and then I'll, I'll I'll let everybody move on. I just want to say that my what I what I sort of hear a lot is like, oh, oh well, the inspector went out there and they just signed off off on the project so there's nothing we can do now uh, or something along those lines and so i'm i'm not sure if that was something that was just in the past that i i think what i am most of the times i'm referring to have been um you know quite a bit in the past but it's just something that seems to keep coming up um uh in in conversation uh thank you there's a, there's a couple of things to that one is that there's certain um changes that have been approved field changes and the staff has really lim a limited scope in terms of uh, what can be, can be approved in the field. Um, so sometimes it could be attributed to that. Other times it'd be something that staff could have missed. Um, but what I can tell you, and, and again, not to make any excuses, but with COVID and the staff exodus that we had, a lot of things went unchecked. Fortunately, we have the staff now. Um, staff knows their responsibility. And again, I think the um, the evidence to that is all the difficult conversations, one which I just had yesterday, that uh, I continue to have. Thank you, Committee Member Batnish. We will move on to Committee Member Chow. Thank you. Um, the two things, two items um, came into my mind. I think it's already mentioned by um, Director Figueroa before, it's going to be discussed. So I don't know if uh, I really need to bring it up as one of the, as um, two of the three topics. So one is the the, the window purviews. If uh, the window changes, uh, how much of that the design, the DRC um, will have uh, a say um, and the second one is again um, the the roofing material. I think um, the, uh, Director Figueroa already uh, talked about that before. Um, my impression that it is going to be discussed. Excellent points. The roofing material. That's actually you beat me to it. It's going to be in my director's report, so you took my thunder. But um, we're expecting to bring that forward either July or August. So we'll initiate that process. I think the windows is actually, uh, this is a perfect opportunity for your, this committee to discuss um, whatever ideas you, you have. Um, the, we, staff is gonna take a item to council, which was something that council requested that we take, which is the window procedures. Um, through our diligent research, and when I say we, meaning the planners, uh, they found the ordinance that, uh, was it an ordinance or resolution? It was it was it was the ordinance that was uh, that authorized the window procedures and pre-approved materials list, and so it gives us a path in terms of how to um, update it. What it doesn't do is to address the procedures, and so 
one of the questions that uh, staff has to counselors if there's an appetite to update that and i think that i think your input would be valuable uh prior to having that meeting and discussion with the council so i think that's an actual a pretty good uh point to raise during the meeting what your concerns are what you'd like to see perhaps there are certain things that you don't think staff should oversee or certain things that you think staff should oversee because you think it's it's probably a waste of time for both you and the applicant so i think that's a perfect opportunity to discuss those ideas quick follow-up um to that is because I, I think it's going to take some discussion and uh, with help from the staff as well. So um, how do you think we should approach that so we can have something perhaps a little bit more um, more uh, with, with more details or more thought that we can recommend? And I think this is something that we do with the Planning Commission. With Planning Commission, they email staff their concerns. And when... Um, I um, presented the project or presented the topics to the council at the meeting. I, I indicated the topic, what the concerns are, and that's how the dialogue uh, began. So um, I, I think, again, we're, you know, council is not going to get into the details. What they're going to do is see the overall global issue, you know, and, and I think once you start um, dictating what those issues are, I think they'll, I think they'll, gravitate to that and say, you know what, staff, I think you need to start looking at this once you start with DRC and then go to planning commission, just like they did with the roofing materials. Follow on committee member Chang's question. All of us would email you before the 30th. Or we could, right, or we could start discussing it now. But I mean, if you, obviously none of you knew what each one of you was going to mention tonight. So, but if all of you have ideas, we can capture those right, right now. Otherwise, you can email me and I, I can make sure to compile that list and uh, include that in my presentation. Probably best that we don't go with 18 different things, right? Right. And I think this is really helpful that we're getting some of our ideas out to discuss, yeah. especially because we can't do this on our own. Um, so do you have any more you want to bring up right now? Or, or you had your two, and then, then I'll go on to, to <laughs> committee member Chang, or I guess I could do mine next, right? Because I'll let me go straight down the line. This is no... There's no okay title here or anything. Okay, so uh, I also wanted to, um, uh, I would like to limit the rear yard impervious coverage uh, for all the reasons. Um, privacy, lack of trees, uh, it's, it's causing a lot of heat. I don't mean that from um, like a whole global warming sense. I, I meant literally from sitting in a backyard and having a lot of concrete, it's very um, unappealing and uh, and not good for resale value, in my opinion. Uh, and I, um, I comes, it, it, it's, it's also not good for runoff. Uh, and I think that um, when you have houses near you that have a lot of um, impervious coverage, there's a lot of water draining into neighboring properties. Okay, uh, um, my other uh, thought, is uh, we don't have any purview over lighting, exterior lighting. And if that is something that we are would like to have purview over, uh, if that's something we could, especially when the applicants are adding doors and the doors need to have windows, exterior windows because of code, um, oftentimes they don't come in the plans and we don't have any say in where they can put the sconces. And some houses have, have added a lot of light to their outside of their homes. And I think that's something that would be helpful the, the purview that you're referring to, are you talking about sort of like a dark sky ordinance where you limit the wattage or are you elimination or are you speaking simply on the placement of the lighting fixtures? The style placement, the number of lights uh, or just to see them and to be under our purview because they might show a house that they've added, you know, rows of rows of French doors, but they don't show the lights even though by code they have to have a light because they've added doors. So when the, when somebody is looking at a project going in, they might be startled when the house has those kind of lights that stay up, stay on all the time. <laughs> and they're, you know, peering into people's backyards. Um, and it, they also aren't compatible with a lot of the houses. So sometimes. So currently. Currently right now we have no, they can come to us without showing us any light fixtures. So 
is there is so currently that per, that uh, authority uh, lies within my purview is what you're suggesting is that a project that comes before you that includes lighting or right a renovation for example you want that to be included in your in the drc's purview right how about where there is no renovation and the applicant is not coming before you and they would like to play a sliding would you like that to be under your purview that ever happen no because it's currently under my purview i mean they come to you just to put lights up uh fixtures and so forth without doing any renovation right well in theory they oh. haven't come to me in that case but in the case that they wanted to that that's under my purview or the director's purview and also the wattage and the, the illum illumination yes right now there's some remodels that have such bright light all around the house at night that it's glaring into the neighbor's yards so is that something that is under this city's purview your purview to it is that even a code how much light they can emit um it's not part of the zoning code so for instance um what the director is allowed to um, approve administratively um is the design of the lights and placement in regards to wattage i mean those can get changed out relatively easily it's not something that we currently look out or enforce and i'm not unless it's a building code i'm not i'm aware of any light ordinance in the city so that would be different than what we are currently doing right now. Okay, I, I'm thinking the style of the light and the light on the on the um, rend rendering when we see it. I know right now they do bring them to us to be to try to complete the picture, but it's not actually under our purview, if it's my understanding. So, so the question that I have though is, in general, or just the projects that just the projects that come before DRC? Okay. I could just like add something to that. Um, I have heard a lot of issues in town and people don't know, seem to know what to do with someone who has a light on their house that's, you know, shining a bright light into their living room. Yeah. And somehow they kind of get the runaround. Just telling so you that's what I've heard. That does come up and, and some of the bright lights are really bright. Some people have these security lights that are just. Well, we'll take a look at that as well. Okay. And then. Um... Or do, the amount of time projects are allowed to stay under construction, that's a whole, that's another, that's not DRC, okay. Uh, how about um, the purview over the garage if it's under a certain square footage? So right now the exemption is? Um, so detached, only detached garages under 600 square feet are able to be approved administratively. If they are um, over 600 square feet visible from the street, they have to go to DRC. Or if it's a garage that's not visible from the street, but is over 720 square feet, it has to go through a CUP, which kicks it up to a planning commission. So barring the planning commission scenario, is there a scenario that you, you this committee envisions that it will, that will want the garage to come from? Yeah, we've been told um, sometimes that the garage is not under our purview, not and maybe not with this specific staff, but that had come up, remember, several times where they said the applicant is taking the garage down and moving it over here, but that's not under your purview, so Correct. just ignore it. Right. So that would be something that it would be something that would be nice to be under our purview. In, in, the, context in the context of a project, yes. It should be under a preview, the design of the garage and the location of the garage. So what I'm hearing, I think what I'm hearing from DRC is if there is a project associated with the garage renovation, new garage, expansion of a garage, you would like for that particular action to be included in the design review. Correct. Okay. <laughs> you don't like my ideas, are you? So, so in the in the in the scenario where there, there's no, the only thing they're doing is some sort of garage that's exempt that can be approved at staff level, you don't want to see that. No, oh, I want to see it. You want to see Do that as well. Even if it's standalone and doesn't have anything to do with one of our projects. Oh, nothing to do with the project. Right. Just the so anything associated with the project that you have purview under, 
you would like the garage to be included in that? I would like, yeah, I would like, I guess if someone was choosing to move a garage and a driveway as the only part of the project, I think it should go to somebody because of the impact it has on the neighboring properties when you relocate things like this as significant as a garage because the flow, the flow of traffic is impacted, which impacts the neighborhood. Just thought, okay, I'm gonna move on though, because my most important, my, my biggest concern is the window list uh, and window replacement. And I would, I would like to have more uh, purview over the type of window that can be placed in the, in the, front facade of a house or any um, street facing side to be changed uh, versus uh, right now over the counter, you can do wood for alum to aluminum clad, but there are, are many homes in the city that that's not appropriate. Are, are you referring to the pre-approved uh, window manufacturer? You would like to have more of a say. More of a say, but more of a say uh, that, that not every house that wants to change every window can automatically do it without going to um on a check, I see. you know because it's not okay. appropriate for some of the homes so, so, so that would be under procedures which is what i i, I referenced in the okay. beginning which i i, I it, it seems that that's probably going to be something that all of you share um in terms of wanting to have that discussion with city council so it's not a problem i, I and I, i'm most specifically i'm concerned about the facades and, and I know additions to the rear, and I know the windows can't always be perfect, but I, I'm thinking when they want to make an overall change that changes the look of a, a historic home that- um, the, Yeah, the, the, the procedures, which the is procedures. consistent. Yeah. Okay. And I, I want to say Chang. that I agree with that wholeheartedly, both the garage and the window procedures, especially in the uh, facade. I guess based on the time that I've been here, uh, most of the project comes in our window replacement, roofing replacement, and um, um, the rest of them are just landscaping, privacy, that kind of thing. I think the pre-approved list of window replacement due because of the COVID situation, we haven't seen any pre-approved window manufacturer or representative coming to answer some of the questions for us. Uh, we, we can see the number of um, as for single application coming in now. It seems to be that is the future. Is that really the future of the city? I, I have some question mark on that. Uh, what we like to do here is to have those pre-approved manufacturer uh, with, with Steve, uh, staff's help to get them to come in maybe once every so often to to let us have a chance to have a dialogue. Because I want to know if, in fact, uh, Shake Roof, what is the truly the fire um, resistancy of those, even though they claim to be Class A? Uh, is it being backed up by the fire department? because I hear different story from different uh, time and uh, uh, condition. Um, also, are there other peer approved manufacturer that are truly a delivery issue? The applicants coming in tend to say, that, well, I can't get them. Is it really true? I think we like to hear that. So we know what the true market condition is. Now that COVID is kind of behind us. So we need to know that. So that's on roofing. Um, you, you, you can reinforce that during the meeting, but uh, because we are going to have these discussions with you in terms of the material changes, I think that's the better uh, avenue um, than to bring that up to city council because where are we going to do that? Um, our, our hope is to get manufacturers for both window and roofing. Staff and us, right? Right. So yeah. I, I, I think... From what I'm hearing, though, is that there is an appetite to discuss the procedures and either how to, you know, amend them, uh, and perhaps uh, have more go to you or certain things that don't go to you right now go to you and certain things that, you know, you've seen that perhaps you think, you know, we probably shouldn't see these. So I, I think that 
once we tally the vote, I think that's going to be one of the top three priorities. And what I would hope to hear from the city council is because they have direct contact with our citizens. What are the complaints? Because I, I, I hear some of the things that we talked about, but truly <clears throat> uh, being in the community, what we hear is that well, the, the DRC and the planning commission are too tough. We, we can't get anything done. It, it gets very difficult. Me as a citizen, I would rather listen to some of the complaints. If they if they're truly uh, complaints are not being uh, customer friendly, uh, they couldn't get anything done that they really need to. We like to hear from the city council to us so we can work out between staff and us to come up with a way to serve them better. Uh, I mean, to me, that that's important. I think our job is not to be here to make it difficult for them. Our job is to make sure to uphold the, the uh, quality of the project. But yet, on the other hand, we try to facilitate that to make it easier for them. But unless we got all the uh, chips in our hand, we know what the cards are. It's hard for us to play that card correctly. So um, to, I, I, I like to have that dialogue with the city council and say, well, you tell us how you see the city of all the approved projects, are there any complaints? Built projects, are there any major complaints? Uh, trees are being cut down left and right without us. I, I would much rather see that and then so we can do our job better. Um, I'm your conduit so to the city council. So if you would like, if you at the end decide that that's a topic you want to include, we can do that. Obviously, we're gathered here today to get the top three topics so that um, you can make use of that one hour that you have. Um, so if at the end your colleagues feel the same way, I can include that as the top three. Um, I could also include it as a topic, you know, if we do have enough time to discuss it. So I'll, I'll leave it up to all of you to decide what you would like to do with that. I, I, said, I get one, one topic if I may to say that. It's listen from the city council on any concerns that the San Marino citizen has that we need to know, that the DRC need to know, and how we can facilitate that better. And, and staff has no problem including that if that's what the pleasure of the, the committee is. That would be my, my only topic that I'd like to hear from them. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I hope after this, we're, I, mean, I think we're going to narrow it to three, right? Yeah. I mean, which by the way, I think I have two. Even that, three is a lot for an hour. It is. Um, unfortunately. And, and like I said, it goes really fast, but I, I do have two that seem to be resonating right. amongst this committee. So I, I would echo on three of the ones that have been mentioned. And I want to add one thing. Um, so I would echo on procedures for window changes on the facade. I would echo on roofing materials and I would echo on or agree on the garage issue. I would agree on that. If it's a garage that is part of a project where, uh, that's before us, we should be able to um, speak on it. And if it's a garage that's being moved I think that also is a good point. Um, the only other thing that came to my mind and that really, really bothers me, and it, it was in conjunction with one of our things tonight, is, vac is vacant properties. Do we have, is there any room to discuss vacant properties? Uh, what I can tell you, it, it, it was, we, we have a current uh, one-year pilot program where we're gonna be canvassing, code enforcement is gonna be canvassing the city. Um, so far, we've generated a, quite a number of vacant properties based on canvassing the city, based on code enforcement referrals, based on criminal activity. Um, so it's working so far. Uh, uh, you can bring it up. Again, I'm not going to limit what you can and cannot, but it's already at the discussion point that we had with city council during the priority initiatives. Um, How was... Is the community aware that they should be reporting 
vacant houses to so, somebody. I just I don't think like that message has gotten out to so, the so public. We, I don't we've included that. it in our newsletter, but we're oh. also going to include it in a um in a briefing that we we're gonna be sending a mailer to the city with a number of things and the vacant properties is one of them. To the to all residents. All we're residents. gonna get a mailer? A mailer. Excellent. Correct. That's very good. That is very good. And it's, again, it's been a long time. Again, <laughs> you, you, you again you. this committee is stealing my thunder that was part of my oh okay report. stop we're gonna go back back to our no, no, that's great that's great well I, I i look i i'm bringing it up in the context of the drc so we work and we work and we work on a project and then the projects continued and throughout this entire process this house is empty okay so, uh, it's it, it there are many things that flow from that and it's it's a security thing. It's a code enforcement thing. It's, it goes on and on and on. And we are witnesses to that. I feel uncomfortable. We are witnesses to that. Okay. So what, I think what we're, let me try to elaborate a little or more what you're thinking. Because when we go to the projects, we see the vacant house and we see a lot of code violations. We see green pools that are green causing pools, mosquito we problems. Pooled water. We see um, buckets of water. We see a lot of bad things. We see mail piled up and and it looks vacant and that is like a not you know in my neighborhood we all watch out for each other as many of our neighbors do so we pick up each other's mail for each other and we make the house look like someone lives there people tell us when they're going on vacation so we all kind of watch out but when you see a house that's so um deserted and looks so looks so neglected it, it is a big um concern for us as residents to see that and not be alarmed that we need to tell somebody because um, it's dangerous to the neighbors. So they don't know what's going on. I, I would like it, to mention three scenarios. Go back again, and we go back again, and it looks the same. Go ahead. Okay, so that, that that's one part of it. The other part that There's affects one. us as DCDRC is when somebody comes in front of us, and they say, "Oh yeah, we checked with our we checked with the legal neighborhood. Nobody was there. Nobody was home. So there's no approval." There's no disapproval. There's nobody home. And that's not right. That's not right because projects are being, projects will impact the neighborhood projects, will impact the saleability and the, you know, and, and, and on and on and on. I mean, it impacts the city globally, but nobody's home to, to, you know, take the notice and say, I approve this. I don't approve it. it it's, it's not our, our, we're not getting all the information we should be getting as a body when the legal neighborhood's not weighing in and they're not weighing in because the house is vacant. So, so I'll start off with the notification. Um, I believe I brought this up as, as part of my director's report when it happened. Um, staff is, is doing actually the planning commission city council joint meeting. This was brought up. And the result of that was that Council directed staff to work on a policy where the two knock door uh, uh, rule is no longer going to be valid. Uh, it would have to be through uh, some sort of notification, obviously via postal service. Um, as you all know, Joseph Alvarado, our management analyst who helps us out run these meetings, he's on board now and he will, he's taking the lead on that. So he's working on drafting a policy that will help us um uh, uh implement that policy so that's coming in the future that so that's that hopefully addresses that concern and hopefully we can implement that in the near future on the vacant property situation all of you are private citizens so when you step out of these chambers you know if you get a, I, I mean i've gotten calls from certain individuals and you know this property that property i welcome that obviously whatever help assistance we can get that's great and so uh, there's times during public hearings where, you know, I'll be listening to the applicant's uh, 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 presentation of their project. And then I look at staff and I was like, I think he just, he or she just mentioned that their property is vacant. So I sent in, that's why I have my laptop here. I send my email to code enforcement. Next thing you know, we've get, and I'm beginning, cause I get, I get copied on these confirmations I get a confirmation that the house has been registered as a vacant home. So that's working. Uh, sometimes some of you will visit sites and you will indicate that, hey, I think this is there's a possibility this home is uh, vacant. 
So I sent out a, an email to court enforcement. And again, uh, for the most part, we get some sort of confirmation that it is and it's being registered. The hard, difficult part is, and I, I want to be honest with you, there is a procedure as to how you go about doing it. And sometimes we don't get a response because the home is vacant, but we can't find the owner. So it, it is difficult, but it's in our list. We're doing it. I think we are, are, are making great strides since um, we implemented this one-year pilot program. And so hopefully I can bring you some um, um, some notes later on in, in terms of updating you on our progress with that. I, I'm not going to say for you Thank not you. to include it, but I do think that's something that we've Thank already you. And, and discussed. And I don't think we probably want to discuss it, but it would be helpful if the applicants, because when the homes are vacant, if the applicant would be sure, if they would remind the applicant not to have code violations hmm. when the when the committee members are going to be visiting the property. Well, I I, I think, you know, I... I or it's like cleaning up your house when guests come. It seems like some people have no regard to any pride of ownership, like... Well, you know, like I, this, I, I, this we, we, we've had one, I'm not going to say which one, but there's an ongoing green pool and I mean, that's also, a health issue. Even for us visiting, it's, it's a, a vector issue. issue. Yeah. Doesn't it, doesn't it help the credibility of the applicant? Sure. Um, I just also want to remind the, the committee that um, not all the times, but most of the times these homes are recent purchases. And so they have purchased them with the idea that they're going to make improvements. And so they're not fully aware that they might have some sort of coin for, you know, they violated the code because they inherited the violation. They're responsible, but they inherit it and they don't know that they have it. So it's sometimes it's difficult to control that. But um, again, if if we, if staff receives a notification of a potential code enforcement violation, we'll send um, code enforcement out there to uh, check it out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, okay. So yours was the garage. You weren't as concerned. I was on the board with, and with procedures for the window, facade, roofing materials, and garage. Can uh, we uh, consider window and roof procedures one item? Uh, yeah, you can. Or, yeah, that seems. I, I well, I, I think well, when we discussed the roofing, it was typically it was just the materials. Um, are you suggesting you also want to discuss procedures for re roofs? So, so I, what I would—I think say, it was materials, wasn't it? Yeah, my red. Yeah. So, so yeah, for, roof. again, for the the materials, we're going to be bringing the uh, to update the materials list for both windows and roofing in the near future. So that's going that's taken care of. In that sense, you will participate in that. Do, we don't demand. So, I, no need to discuss it. But that's the, my the opinion. Materials. That that's my suggestion to you. Okay. What I do but think. What what I do think that the overall consensus here is that there should be a discussion on the window procedures, window replacement procedures. So possibly currently the garage and the window procedure. Window procedures and garage. And add one more because roofing is going to get discussed down the road. You're saying window and uh, garage procedures. Uh. Well, Gar garage is gar with the bringing, the bringing it before us. Right. Yeah. Right. In, in two instances. So we, so we could add one more. So for the garage, I just want to get some clarity. Um, I think the garage was bringing before us, if I'm saying this correctly. The, the way I understood it, though, was that if a garage is associated with a project that comes before you, you want that that particular action to be included. It's That's one, one part. The design of the garage under our purview. That's the design part. and the location. The other part that Chair brought up was if a project is moving a garage. And driveway. And driveway. So it would have to isn't be Isn't an existing DRC project that would become a DRC project. So, uh, is it more is the right? driveway is, that right? is the concern well, than the garage? I think now that it's come to light in some projects over the years is that anybody can move their, their driveway. And no one has to tell and notify the neighbors. So all of a sudden you don't have a driveway next to you. And then one day you do, and all of a sudden there's cars rolling up next to you and you didn't buy a house that had a driveway next to you. And that impacts your quality of life and your property values. So I think that the fact that there is no body that decides if that's compatible or not should be, it should be. 
what I'm hearing more is that it's the relocation of a driveway that is more concerning than and the a actual. garage. Well, so because want- for instance, many houses that are built on small lots, such as mine and many others, our garage actually functions as the wall between our properties. So there is no property line between my, like my garage is my neighbor's yard and my back neighbor's backyard. And I think in the mission district, they're all like that. So when somebody, if want, someone wanted to relocate their garage, it would take down our separator and severely impact the properties. So most people don't do that, but on occasion we have had people that have wanted, proposed to do that. Okay. So window procedures, uh, garage, is associated with any uh, projects under the purview of DRC and the relocation of both a garage and driveway. Okay. Perhaps the third one we can consider is the uh, backyard impervious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe not talk about it so much if we don't want to spend time on it, but let them know that we find it of a high importance. I'll, I'll, also, I'll place it as the third item. Um, we have time talk about it, but we can at least emphasize that we are also. I think it would be one of those where if you have five minutes, you can emphasize, you know, your strong sentiment about having some sort of uh, uh, standard that would oversee that. Again, uh, council already direct the staff to look at that in the future. Um, we'll, we'll at some point look and see our, uh, under our work program when we can um when we can update that or bring something to the council, but you, I'll put it as a third item. Okay, and I also have the street facing window replacement. Is that, I, I'm a little confused over whether that made it to one of the items. Yes, or it's the part of item. the, it's a part of the discussion. Okay, sorry, I just wasn't quite sure. A little confusing. Yes. And the garage is an um, discussion on rear impervious coverage. And are we gonna discuss exterior lighting or not? That's that yes, is not. So we have three. I, I believe that's the consensus. Sounds good to me. You're ready to go. Okay. Okay. So we all went out. Yeah, we're done. Uh, yeah, we did our hour here. Um, uh, we will. Um, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Or going to make the motion, but I have a question now on the minutes. The, the the way the, the items here, it was not a regular meeting. Wasn't it a special meeting? It was a special meeting. Sorry, give me one second. I'm just opening up minutes. I'm just looking at the staff um, report for today. If the minutes themselves say special meeting, that's great. But the way that the um, item is on the agenda, I, I can make the motion as special meet as Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So I wrote the minutes that said special meeting, but on the agenda, it did not okay, say good. special meeting. Okay, good. Yeah. But I just want to confirm the that. The minutes themselves say special. Yes. I, I would move to approve uh, the minutes of the design review committee special meeting of June 7, 2023. Do you have a second? Second that. Okay. We'll committee member Batnish? Yes. Committee member Chow? Yes. Committee member Chang? Vice Chair McKay? Yes. And Chair Lacon? Yes. 5 okay, approval for approval minutes. Um, before we move on to the to number, I guess, to our reorganization, I want to um, ask all of you um, if you would be uh, uh, open to proposal to cancel the July 5th DRC meeting July. due to the fact it's right after July 4th. Just cancel that meeting and then we'll have our next meeting two weeks after that, which would be the 19th, 19th July. And then uh, that'll just be one meeting. Yes, so only one meeting for July. Um, how is uh, our workload looking? How's the workload? Are we going to have? Do we have many items or? Uh, we we can manage. We're good. Had a pretty light load lately, so. And also, is anyone is everyone going to be out of town? It's like oh, concern about it, attendance. Attendance is going to be pretty low. 
Are you good with that? I mean, no, Anyone I'm, else? I'm fine with that proposal. Or would you like to? So we meet on July 5th. No. We're supposed to. I'm proposing we cancel the ship. Yes, so we'll only meet the third Tuesday, the third Wednesday of July. So just one meeting. Yeah, that's fine. I'll no problem with that. Okay. Great. Then we'll do that. Do we have to make a motion to do that? No. Okay. Great. And then we'll move on to our reorganization. Um. I do it or do you do? You're gonna. Uh, I think I just wanted to, uh, on behalf of staff, just uh, thank both you and Vice Chair McKay for this past, for your leadership this past year. Um, staff appreciates all the time. And again, I just want to, you know, for all those who are watching or will, you know, uh, play back this, this meeting, uh, all of you are volunteers. Uh, you know, you're not employees. You don't get paid. You have your normal jobs, uh, normal day to day things that you do and then on top of that every uh, first and third wednesday of the month you come here and you you try to make this community better and we appreciate that i've learned a great deal of the past year and a half that i've been here um you made my uh my position here better i've learned a lot so i really appreciate that uh to chair lacan i mean since i started here you may you offer yourself to you know anything that i need and um sure i get once in a while and ask the email for from you but <laughs> <laughs> no in all seriousness um you know obviously we have great communication you've been there you've been a great resource to not just me but staff so i appreciate uh not just this year of your leadership but the year and a half that you've uh, helped us out so um take it away thank you everyone i really enjoyed being chair which i didn't think i would so thank you very much and uh i look forward to next year and thank you thank you chair and very much you've all been really great and sharon has been a wonderful vice chair and she's <laughs> she's kept our meetings on track our preparation for the meetings and and she's our very thorough minutes reader also on top of everything else she's so good at so thank you very much um i'm gonna miss being the chair but i am ready to move on so and thanks to the staff you guys do a really great job a great job and we expect a lot out of the staff and I, I want you guys to know that we um very high property values here and we ask a lot of the staff to help maintain the standards of the city and i know it's a lot and we ask a lot so you guys do you look over um one of the biggest things in our city so thank you very much thank you so how how does this how does this work as far as the reorganization? Sometimes someone just barks out something, but I think we'll start with the chair, right? We start with chair. We start with vice chair. Well, you you you, you can anyone can make a uh, nomination. I would you know you're the chair, so if you would like to move forward with the nomination, go ahead and nominate. Okay, I'll make a nomination. I'll nominate vice chair McKay as chair for the next year, and I'll second that. We're all fighting to second it. Yeah. Okay, how time. about roll call? Committee member Batnish? Yes. Committee member Chow? Yes. Committee member Chang? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair McKay? Yes. And Chair Lagon? Yes. Okay, do I? <laughs> oh, you're switching now? Very much. Bye. Bye. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. you so much. Then can I make a nomination for a vice chair? Or how is that done? I, I, I think we'll leave it up to the new chair. Okay, okay. Yes, congratulations. And you're gonna be a dual one, you're dual one. <laughs> Thank you, Chair, for your dedicated service, your devoted and dedicated service to this body, um, not only as a chair, but as a member for so many years and all you do for the city side of this uh, committee is very much appreciated. We have another nomination. Um, I would like to make a nomination for vice chair, but if you would like to make a nomination uh, chair, uh, I, would you like to I'm sure I would like to nominate Rick Chow as vice chair. I would like to second that. <laughs> Roll call. Um, 
Is there is there an issue? No. Uh, Commander Member Benish? Yes. Commander Member Chow? Yes. Uh, uh, Committee Member Chang? Yes. And Committee Member Likum? Yes. And Chair McKay? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. I got worried. You paused for a second. Well, it's un unexpected. I'm just humbled. Thank you. No, you're good. We're going to have a great year with the chair and the white chair. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think it looks good. Yeah. Now we have a director's report. There you go. <laughs> well, it's going to be a short one because okay. most of it <laughs> you know, is um, Just want to inform the uh, committee that uh, 1425 Bradbury Drive, which was is an appeal of a previously denied DRC project. It's uh, in addition to the rear. Um, that will be going before planning commission next Wednesday, June 28th. And so as customary, I will let you know what the outcome is in the next DRC meeting. Um, and then um, last Wednesday, uh, the city council adop adopted, the, by, uh, uh, adopted an ordinance first reading for objective design standards. So uh, these are for multifamily homes that will uh, have to be required to be uh, located within the commercial one district based on state mandated law, housing law. Uh, and you can only apply objective design standards, meaning the standard that is be, that uh, governs, you know, the height has to be clear, has to be defined. Um, that goes into site, building, um, uh, landscaping. So everything that governs these structures, the objective design standards have to be objective. Um, and so we adopted those last Wednesday. Our second meeting will be is scheduled for next Friday. Um, and, and as a result of that meeting, uh, there were two items that city council deferred to DRC. One is the selection of an air tone color palette. So staff will come back to you with uh, some options. And so city council will like your recommendation on you know, what would be the best for the city. And two is stuck, which we discussed earlier today is stucco treatment. They will like the opinion of a uh, recommendation of DRC in regards to stucco treatment. So we'll be bringing that forward in the uh, near future. Um, and um, other than that, have a safe 4th of July and see you at uh, Lacey Park. Thank you. Thank you. No other written communications for distribution? No. So since we have no further business to discuss, this meeting is adjourned at 8.07 p.m. and the next design review committee meeting will be held on July 19 at the Kroll Public Library Barth Community Room. Thank you. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, yes. Thank you for leading. That started so you're fine. Not at all. I have learned so much. So anything,